Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, in the last episode, we began to break up our town into smaller districts with their own various policies. We added more elementary schools and local parks, as well as a new sports hall and gymnasium in the center of town, with a complimenting car park and several bus routes as well to ease some traffic. Things have been going pretty well, but it's time for another expansion, as reaching the next milestone will allow us to create higher density living, so we can finally begin to plan out our much more orderly and densely packed city center closer to the coast. Because we need so many new roads, I've got it all covered in a handy time lapse. So let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm gonna be starting off by continuing to build the arterial road all the way around the town. I've decided that it should go fully around it and be a full circle, a full bypass, if you will, and have the suburbs residing within it. Now to do that, we have to clear out a little estate that we had just built that was actually built right after we kind of got rid of the landfill area. Uh, whereas we were planning to remove the power plant and the landfill. So those guys are gone now because they had to make way for this road. So I feel a bit bad. They just moved in, but oh well. Anyway, we're connecting this back out. The overall rule that I go with when I'm trying to build these things is generally just don't have too many junctions too close to each other if they're going to be on the arterial. You want a decent amount of space between them, two or three blocks. And that way traffic should remain sort of free flowing on it. I think so anyway. And this will be a nice way for them to eventually get out. Now I can't connect the arterial, the right side to the left side just yet because that tile to the north there of the screen or just towards the bay you know i haven't unlocked it yet so i can't actually fully connect it but the plan is to connect it there in the future so i'm just paving this area or i always say paving i'm just coloring this area in with grass so removing some of the oil deposit uh, because there's such a low quantity of oil around the park at the lake anyway and it's going to become a sort of a national park it just looks a bit better if we get rid of it uh, and i don't think people will mind what i'm doing here is removing a bunch of seniors so a problem I was having in the last episode was we had like 30% seniors living in our city. It just was becoming a bit too much. And the entire first suburb we built was like all seniors. So we had to do something about that. Now, I'm not looking to sort of quote cheat and just demolish all the houses that have seniors in them and get them out of here. Although that is what I just did. The main change is actually under the hood. I've changed some of the settings for the realistic population mod because I actually think a setting was bugged or broke or I set it incorrectly at the beginning of the playthrough. People were retiring at the age of like 50, which is fine, but it means that they're, be quote, becoming a senior at the age of 50. It means they're not going to work anymore and that's why our place was just filling up with seniors for many years on end. So I've changed that now to be 70. It's actually the max you can go. But the idea is you can't actually change the rate at which people die. Like, I don't know roughly what age they die in game. I assume it's like 80s, 90s, up to 100 or something. But you can change when they retire. So by basically making the workforce last a little bit longer, you're in effect changing it so that seniors only are around for 10, 15, 20 years. And that way it, it, it reflects a bit more realistically. We should end up having about 15 to 20% um, seniors as a population metric overall. And then when we build our high density living, seniors are more attracted to living in the suburbs, not in the high density areas. So we should be able to better plan for that then in the future also. So it just caused a bit of a shock to the economy at the beginning, which I talk about in the episode a lot, so I'll, I won't be redundant. But that shock to the economy meant that I wanted to just remove some brute force, remove some of those seniors, and also put down some extra jobs and commerce. Because effectively what we've just done is make, made it so that some people want to now return to work, but they actually, there's a weird kind of issue with them where they're still kind of counted as retired. So until that generation sort of phases out, we won't really see the full effect of like this change, but it'll happen over the next two or three episodes, I think, and things will normalize again. So anyway, what I'm doing is just, as you can see, just building out the suburbs, kind of chaotically, trying to always make sure that our junctions are evenly spaced out along the arterial road so that it has lots of room, traffic isn't gonna get backed up and block multiple junctions, and that all these cul-de-sacs people have multiple ways out, right? So they have, usually out of a cul-de-sac, I want them to have like two different ways out eventually to either go into the town, onto the arterial road. So not just one option. That's ultimately what I'm looking for. Not saying it's like super good planning or anything. I like to think the really serious good planning is going to start when we get that high density and we start saving up a bit more money uh, for some of the services that are going to be required for that. So then we get to the real serious city planning part. This is more just like an organic, natural looking English sort of layout to a town where it's like none of this was planned <laughs> that's what it feels like um and that's kind of what i was trying to represent because when i'm laying out these roads I, I have no idea where the school is going to go or anything like that but obviously in future you build everything with everything in mind it's like okay where is your commercial district going to be where is the industry going to be how do people get from a to b 
How do people get to their local school? Where the service is going to go? That kind of stuff. So I will think about all that in the future. I know you should probably always think about it, even with the suburbs. But there's something just a bit more natural about having this kind of chaotic uh, situation. And I think I even mentioned it later in the episode. There's something kind of nice about fixing problems. If you, you know, you have to create them in the first place to fix them. But there is something nice with going, oh, I've got a massively backed up red traffic road here. I'm going to do something. And then you see the traffic flushing out and it goes green again. It's like, yes, that's a nice little dopamine rush. You feel like you did something right. But you did ultimately create the problem, I guess, as well. Anyways, this has just been fun to watch in the background. I'm just laying out some pathways. I need to get put a bit more time into doing that. It's, everything just takes so much time. But need to put some more time into building out more pathways, connecting things for sure. And then we're going to have the big park in the center, hopefully in the future. I keep saying that, but I do have plans for it. I've been testing some of the park tools. And I kind of know what we're going to do. So it's just going to be like a little nature reserve. There'll be campsites and things like that. Should increase the land value and the attraction, the tourism to the area as well. And we'll have a little commercial district just outside of it. I've connected some of the suburbs up now with roundabouts. I think it just helps the traffic keep flowing. It also just kind of looks nice every now and then, I think, to have these small ones. Uh, and then doing my lane connections. we doing a lot of lane connections in this episode. And uh, stay till the very, very end. Because I correct some of the mistakes I make during, just so you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The new, well, not, I was going to say proposed expansion for swords, but it's not really a proposal, is it? It is in effect. We just need to actually zone it to finally get some people moving in. And we can actually see people making use of my lovely roundabout right now. Which is lovely to see. Good on you. So, we've got a lot of problems going on in the City of Swords. We've now filled out the shape of it, which is awesome. But, of course, we have not unlocked this tile yet, so we can't link our arterial road just yet, so people will have to come into the town clogging up traffic a little bit until we do that expansion. The other thing is, as I mentioned in the time last, we have this retirement problem. So to go into it in a bit more detail now, effectively, our situation is this. We went from having about 1,500 seniors to now having 500 seniors. And that's caused an issue for unemployment. We shot up from 1% to 2% to now 22%. So a lot of people are out there saying we don't have any jobs, which is giving us an increased demand for industry. Now, it's a little not quite accurate some of these people are never going to return to work because they are tr technically seniors we have raised the retirement age and when they were retired they're like well i'm out but they kind of count as unemployment so basically this mod is causing some issues because i'm after changing one of the settings but over time we should see it balance out as the seniors depart our city of course we've already evicted some and demolished some of the um what would you say this this the health and safety co building codes weren't up to scratch on some of these structures. They were built many years ago, and we just, you know, for safety reasons, we had to demolish them. And that's left a lot of open plots of land. So what we need to do is start zoning more commerce, more industry, get more people in, which I've already kind of done. I've increased a little bit of commercial zoning here, so two new shops have just appeared. Another one here has just appeared. That's the only new ones I've put down. I was thinking we could even maybe slam in a few on this side if we get a little daring. Um, we could also put some extra industry down here because we have so much unemployment so let's maybe fill this area out here and this one and see how we get on i don't want to go too crazy with it just yet anyway long story short all you need to know is because of the mods things have just you know taken this sh shock to the system but ultimately it will start to slow down and get back to normal seniors should grow to about 15 to 20 percent eventually and then the ones that aren't employed and not really doing anything in the system they'll kind of just die out um, money is fluctuating like wild, but I'm not too worried about it. We do still make our factory products, and we should see the farm filling back up with fresh uh, people. Yeah, look at this. We're up to 410. So that's really good, right? We were in decline. We went down to 380, and I think that was because people were retiring at just like a young age, and the mod wasn't really operating correctly. It was 
trying to override it or something to an age of like 55. So the retirement age was 55, now it's like 70. Um, which is obviously really high, but it's not really based on any reality. It's more just actually setting like, how long do people work until they die? That's kind of the way it is. You don't set the ages that they die, you sort of set the age they become a senior. And they become a senior when they stop working, so that's kind of how that works. Anyway, this is a very long, rambly kind of explanation of what's going on, but hopefully with commerce growing, with industry filling out now a little bit more, we can just take our time. I don't really have much, many plans for doing specific buildings. What I do have plans for is putting down maybe a roundabout here. We got some congestion, and we're only going to be getting more as more and more factories are opening up here now. Um, so I was thinking a roundabout would work fairly well here, and it was suggested in my Discord to connect this road to this. And that way we can kind of just bypass, go straight in. Now, it's busier in the morning time than it is at night. I've actually noticed the traffic flow at night time can go up to like 86%. And in the morning, it can go down to like 78, 79. Now, this is where I would finally start to say, yes, this is kind of now an issue. These junctions are a little too close together, which is another issue as well. And we need to probably provide another pedestrian crossing bridge here. Because another thing is that's slowing these guys down getting out is people are crossing the street all the time here. Some of them are going over, which is fine, but some of them are just going across and cars are waiting. And then there's this big backup. And of course, this road comes from all the way in the center of town. So it's a lot of a lot of estates, or not estates, well, cul-de-sacs, filter into it, uh, which is also part of the problem. And it's fun. You know, I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of almost like creating little problems for myself to solve. If you almost do everything perfect starting off, I know this sounds like such a cop-out thing to say. But if you were just to build a giant grid and everything just worked, it's like, well, it's not that fun, is it? I mean, it, you know, I don't know. But obviously you don't have to do that. If you're just a really good player and you know how to make an interesting looking city and avoid the problems at the same time and be really good at planning, then that's probably the, the best goal. But I think there's something satisfying with, hey, I've got a big red line blocking a road. Let's unblock it. And then when it gets back to green, you go, yeah, that's cool. I, I did something that worked, you know. And that's real life. People don't just found cities almost ever <laughs> where they have a complete plan in mind it sort of should grow organically i think it's interesting seeing all these people just using a little donut van here driving to a convenience store taking the long route maybe it felt like there was a lot of traffic another way uh so another thing i want to just do a little sit rep on is let's check out how our bus routes have been doing so we set up i think in total now six bus routes uh five yeah two for the blue line two for the yellow line and one for red red just goes around the Belmont district. Ah, so it's actually broken a little bit since changing the uh, the layout of certain things. Now, why would that be? So they're going out here, and that's bringing you up and around. Oof, yeah, I don't know. That might need to be redone or something. But you're going from here to there, are you? What were you doing before? To oh, it was a roundabout. Yeah. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll just leave that then for a little while. <laughs> I might have to redo this this route in general. But that's not actually that bad. I mean, there's no traffic on any of this right now, so it's totally fine. We've got no demand really for uh, residential zoning, so I'm not, not going to zone this straight away. I was saving this area for fresh commercial zoning, which I think would be good. Uh, and something I actually want to do with it is have the access just on the front and the back. So what we could do to reinforce that, turn off zoning here. Okay, I guess that is already covering that area. Okay, that's good. As long as the building's face in and out, that should be fine. And then obviously this area is, is eventually going to be a park. I don't know when I'm going to commit to doing that just yet, but I do want to do it. need to build up a bit more money. Money has been a bit of a strain for me lately. We could take another loan if we want to get stuff done quickly. Let's have a look at our vitals. <laughs> Sewage, water, electricity. Electricity is quite high. Maybe we'll just pull that down a bit to 85 Water availability is also quite good. Maybe we'll just pull that down. Some cost cutting measures here. Sewage treatment's right on the edge. Maybe we'll increase that just slightly as we expect it to fill up a bit. Garbage processing, crematorium, etc. That's all good. Now the buses, we need way less buses at night. I was keeping an eye on actually the routes uh, when I was doing that time lapse and uh, things are looking pretty good in terms of the amount. So we'll just check the bus routes again. 
and we can see the passengers are not nearly as high as before. We've kind of spread it out because the routes are kind of overlapping each other rather than just the one we had before. So now if we have a little scroll through this, it is daytime. We have certain buses, by the time they're getting out to Franklin Heights, which I think is here, or maybe it's the other stop. No, it doesn't really matter anyway. By the time they're ending their route, they seem to be kind of full. So I, by the looks of things, I think the numbers are good. I think so anyway. So we're at 13 out of 30, 5 out of 34 out of 39 out of 30. But as we get closer down, 22 and 16. Uh, what time of day is it? Yeah, it's midday. We'll keep an eye on it as well. But I was noticing like, yeah, it's pretty good. You could maybe take one bus off the route, but we're not, we're not leaving too many people waiting. Almost just the right amount, I would say. It's quite happy to see the way it kind of panned out. Edward Gray, going home, unemployed. See, he's a senior, but he's unemployed. And this is why we have like, quote, a high unemployment rate at the moment. We don't want to just spam out more industry because they actually won't fill. There's 23 jobs available. It's not just the education that's the issue. I promise you, although it actually does look like it, but it's not. Because um, I actually ran tests where I ran the game for five years with this retirement switch just to see. I didn't build anything. I just literally ran it for five years, walked away and came back to take a note how many seniors were being left in the city and uh yeah it's kind of reset at the moment and it'll start to increase again over time anyways you don't have to worry about that we'll see it all get fixed over time all right money seems to be okay right now it's kind of coming back up a bit so that's good so let's um implement this traffic change see if we can get the job done so let's understand the problem first if we have a look at traffic We've got a busy road. A lot of people use this road to get out to the main arterial, and a lot of people are using that mostly just to get to work. Not everybody, but a lot of people. As you can see, after that junction, there's not many cars along this road. And these guys are also... Are they still being told to wait? Uh, with a yield sign. No, there's no yield or anything. But, um, yeah, let's fix this up for them. So first things first, we'll try to join the roads, I think, to the industrial estate. In fact, if we pick the industrial road... We'll grab that first. We'll get this one. Bring this down to about here and then just curl it in. Can we bring it down further? Could almost do that, I guess. And then just continue it. Not looking okay. Should have used this mode, actually. I'm just going to redo that because sometimes the height can mess up as we're going down this hill here. Distance too short. Oh, that's just because of it. Yep. All right, that's a nice road. So, we got to like solve the traffic problem on this. The first thing I wanted to do was at least build a roundabout on it, which is probably going to evict some of these houses. And we don't want it to be too big. Should it go one bigger than that, maybe? About there? Because it's a four lane in. All right. <laughs> these guys are like, whoa, <laughs> which way do we go? Oh, also, I spotted at the end of the episode, actually, when I was rendering it, that that house I put down... Yeah, there it is. I haven't done that yet. Um, there's two houses in the same spot, so there we go. It's because I moved it while it was zoned. I think it'll stay the way it is now. Let's just shift this and then shift it back. I think it'll understand what's happened. I hope so, anyway. Hopefully another one doesn't grow within that. We'll see. Okay, so here's our roundabout. Let's uh, tidy it up. We'll pause the game to do this. Let's just tidy up the junctions a little bit. I'd like to do that first. And when we've got four entrances or exits or whatever you want to call it, it, um... Oh, yeah, it's also created traffic lights, has it? No, that's okay. Good. Oh, wait, actually, maybe. Nope, we're good. All right, so first things first, the easiest thing to do at the beginning is just to select the road as adjusting the road and then click the TMPE for applying all the traffic rules for a roundabout, boom. So that in instantly gives this a priority road with yield signs going into it, which you actually don't need, but we'll leave it for now. I might change that, but we'll leave it for now. It also removes the crosswalks, crosswalks that were inside of it, so that's gone. So we'll have smoother transitions. Now what I like to do is actually manually do the lanes. You don't have to do that, but I notice these can be a strange behavior sometimes. Um, whereas if we manually do the lanes and connect them ourselves, things will balance out a lot better. So I'll try to do it quickly. We'll just connect. So this is four lanes in. So we can actually keep them in their own respective lanes, I think. It's much like this. They don't need to be crossing over anything for there. But here they will. So we'll have to go. You go to there or there. You go to here or here. But if you're in this lane, you go this way. 
So people will need to know before they get up here, if they want to get out this way, you stay in that right lane. And that is the way roundabouts work, right? In real life. Funny story, actually, I just got my provisional license. And as a recording, which you might see this the day of, I might have already done it, but I'm doing my first driving lesson. <laughs> um, God have mercy on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> if this game's anything to go by, but yeah. So actually, yeah, by the time this comes out, I'll have done my first lesson the same day. Um, Alright, so yeah, you guys go there, you guys go there. I think that's okay. Remember, this is all actually optional. Some people get a little concerned when I'm doing this. Also, there is too many nodes. I thought it wouldn't actually create too many nodes, but it seems like it did. That one does not need to exist. Alright. Let's go back into our Oh my god, whoops. Lane thing here. Alright, just connect this guy out. Now, actually, I just thought of something. This, I'm going to make this a one way in. The reason, my, my reasoning is, this is a two lane, obviously going forward this way. If this is one way in, we can make this one way out, and that gives people the freedom to sort of go wherever they need to. I think that would be better. It might cause some issues at this side, though, thinking about it. So, we'll see. But let's just try it out. We'll take off the yield signs on this, just let them figure that out themselves, and then we'll figure it out if we need to do something more strict with them. So, let's go one way. Two lane, one way, small industrial road. That's a smaller road than what we're looking at now, is it? Or is that what we want? No, that's what we want. We'll flip it this way. Alright, so we're... This is the filter out, and this will be a filter in. Just because these junctions are close together, so I don't want people going like this and crossing over. I think that would interrupt the flow, because it would stop people getting out this way as people are trying to cross over that way all the time. So this way, it's like, look, if you want to leave, just go out this way and then choose where you go on the free-moving roundabout. Uh, so let's fi finish up our lanes now. So you can't go that way, right? So you have to keep going. And you're not changing lane either. Not, let not letting you do it. All right, so you've already made your choice about where you're going to be. I don't know if that's a real thing, by the way. <laughs> You're in this lane, so you cross into the center? Maybe it is. Anyway, um, and then you lead out, or you, of course, should have the freedom to continue on. That's something I forgot to do. <laughs> yep, see, so the freedom to continue on, you've got the freedom to continue on, and you need it as well. Alright, are we good? So now we can go around the roundabout, and the lane should hopefully guide you in, depending on which one you're in on the way in, if that makes sense. English is a silly language sometimes. Especially when I use it. So, another thing I'd like to do is maybe blend the edges of the road just slightly here so it looks a bit better as you're turning right. Like this. Because we're smoothing out, so it looks like the turn is more f freely moving. Does that make sense? Kind of. Kind of. Can't really bend that one anymore. Yeah, there we go. Alright, we'll do the same with this one. Pull it back a bit. Tilt that forward a bit, so let's, you know, give you the room to get out. Hopefully the nodes aren't too close together or anything. Something like that, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. No idea. At least I have an idea of what I'm doing, but something tells me I'm doing everything wrong. Okay, our bus is continuing around the route, so that's good. So it'll take a little bit of time for things to adjust, and then we'll check out if it's just like free-flowing, how things look. So we'll flush the area, wait for the, you know, it's almost tomorrow, the new day, uh, where people are going to be going to work for the first time again. So we'll see how we're managing everything then. Now the other, one last thing I wanted to do, though, was um, get rid of the crosswalks here really free up the traffic so to do that we want a pavement going across oh yeah we don't need zoning here anymore that's fine clear that area so let's grab this just while it's um dark i'm just gonna brighten up the day so it was 5 p.m let's say let's just brighten this up so we can see what we're doing 
Before I let time play, I'll put it back. Don't want to mess with the traffic too much like that. Okay, so turn off our grid. Uh, maybe just connect this here. I guess, yeah. Okay, and then we'll raise it. Hopefully that's high enough. Six meters. Uh, we'll need to use anarchy, I think, for this. Okay. And just bring that down. Back where it kind of started. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just try to bring this down kind of a bit more organically out into the road here. Yeah, I like that. And maybe see if we can just connect this in. I don't know if it'll really let me do it. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully that path will provide people just a way to get across a bit easier. I'd rather them get across here and then walk down this way and cross here. If they're, if they're going to cross anywhere, cross there. Um, it's kind of a nice idea of just walking to work this way, I guess, as well. All right, so the other thing that I want to do is just turn off the crosswalks that are here. God, man, I'm spending a long time in this junction. So turn off the one that's there. Turn off this one. Maybe that one could stay. Is it bad to have just one? Let's feel it out and see how it's going. It's either that or they'd have to go across here and cross over there. So it's one or the other. All right, there we go. That is my proposed roundabout. Uh, for fun, funsies, we could always um, do some dotted lines and such. We just tone down the, yeah, something like that. So I'll just hit copy on this. Tone down the opacity on it. I've noticed some roundabouts have that, and then some don't. You know, I've been observing things more as I've been playing this game in real life. Some roundabouts do have that, and then some don't. I'm not really too sure exactly what their reasoning is. But maybe it's just a general inconsistency. I'm not too sure. So I was just thinking, that's where you have to lead out that way. So what you could do is a filler, right? Control-Shift-F. Click this. Click that. Click that. That's kind of accurate. And if we just fade that way down, maybe it won't look so crazy. And we can add some cracks to it. Uh, maybe bring it up just a bit. About, about there. Copy that. Put another one on this side then. So it's a filler. Control Shift F. Grab that into here. Here. I think that looks kind of cool. What do you think? Is there anything we could do with this one? Not really. This would need some sort of thing to say, like, that's like a cutoff line. I've seen that before as well. But anyway, uh, traffic's looking good. Oh, I meant to um, <laughs> put the time back where it was supposed to be. I probably messed with it too much now, but oh well. All right, we're back where we left off. So how are things? 6,600. Population is actually fairly stable. We can have a look at our current situation. 528 seniors. A lot of adults. 14% uh, unemployment. That's actually not that bad considering the changes we made. 8% seniors. It just went up by one just now. And people have moved back in. The demand for commerce and industry is sort of leveled out. And the traffic flow? 82. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's obviously busy here. Heavy usage on this section. Hey. <laughs> so we just have to move again there. Yeah, I think I'll live here. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful sunrise. Hashtag paradise on earth. We have people using their bikes. Excuse me. <clears throat> Looking good. 
so we've got our new commercial area then as well in the back here, which seems to be panning out just fine. It's growing, doing okay. It's going to be providing more and more noise for these guys, which is going to upset them a bit. Um, so, another little mini change I made just behind the scenes was on the roads where there's bus lanes, I actually increased their speed just a little bit. I know that, realistically, that wouldn't really be a case, I don't think, where the bus lanes are faster, but often buses seem to drive faster than regular cars. I don't know if that's just something I've noticed. Look at this guy. Oh, I was going to say, this cheeky devil just parked his car in there, I guess, to, to get out. But that's okay. You can you can use the, the lane if you're getting out, I guess. That's kind of reasonable. James Dixon just vanished his car somehow. I guess you're supposed to kind of assume that they're parking in, like, these different places or something, or that they're parking in the place that he's going to, M&H Clothing. So maybe his car gets filled up in there. So let's see if we see anyone's car named owner James Dixon. So I'd love to know, where'd your car go? Unless it's in there. No, I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it. I'm calling bullshit on this game. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's like a chi- is it- oh, it's a scooter. <laughs> Yeah, don't see his car. I don't know. Just kind of curious. I mean, it seems a bit strange if you can just make your car disappear. I wonder why everyone doesn't do that. I wonder what the rule is. Why do some people do that and some people don't? Eighty-one percent. All right, so we're getting up to the morning time again. Seven a.m. People are going to start going to work now. So what we can do as well is just maybe check the bus line. Zero passengers on that one. All right, so we have 36 people waiting at this stop. And where is this stop? This is the stop outside of Franklin Heights. Okay, and there's 38 people waiting on this specific route. Because of course there could be other people waiting, like we can see some red people over here for the red line. 39 people now. So this is the first bus that's gonna come in and start picking those guys up. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. It does seem like maybe we could even get rid of one bus, potentially. Two of them on zero here. Very few people on this one going the opposite direction. It's almost like more people are going, yeah, I don't know, away from this town center in the day. What about the red line? Very few passengers on this one, but it has, it does have less buses as well. We could probably lower it even further, I would say. Maybe down to four buses. Save on a bit of money. And then the yellow line. This one's supposed to take people to work, kind of, so it should be busy. Uh, not really. 14 people, 18 and 2. 12 and 8. Although there's 13 people waiting, it's not that bad. Seems okay. What about this one? So this is the other alternate line. 19 out of 30, 14 out of 30. This would be almost going away from work, in a way. We're just going the opposite route, I guess. Yeah, I suppose I shouldn't really think of it that way. Technically, they're both doing the same thing. All right. Traffic does seem like it's not working out very well. All my planning. Why is it so slow turning in here? The crosswalk, maybe. Let's get rid of that crosswalk <laughs> and see how that helps us. If at all. Alright, so you cross there and go in. Yes, looking a bit better. A little bit. Because it means that people who want to go straight, they might be interrupted by some people crossing over. That's fine. But the people who did want to turn in, they just get to turn in anyway, right? So that's a good problem to solve, and if they are in the wrong lane, they cross over and they get into where they need to be. So I'm happy with that. This one actually says just go right. I would say shift that lane to say you can either go forward or right. I don't think you got to be locked in, so it's a forward or right. You don't actually have to use the lane connector for that. You could use this thing as well. It says which way you want these cars to go. And I would say this lane, do not go right. So there you go. <laughs> Very micromanagey, but I think it makes sense. You can both go forward, but if you're in the left lane, you go left. If you're in the right lane, you go right. 
All right, seems like we smoothened that out. A glitch in the simulation, I would say. Got a long tail though back here now as well. So again, one other thing I would try with this is just saying like, forget the yield sign. Just go when you feel like you can. Oh, definitely these guys should not be yielding, I would say, either. Because they're on the big road. I know it's like roundabout rules, but I still just don't think they should. <laughs> they sort of the ones that, like, if anything, have the priority. Let's just see how that goes. So we got rid of all the crosswalks and all the yield signs. <laughs> and yeah, people are using the little bridge. Good to see. That's a long tail, though. Long tail of people trying to get out of the city. Yeah, not good. Seems like we'll have to open up. Let's um, check on a few of these cars and see where are you trying to go. Driving to work. Where do you work? In the indus industrial section. Let's check the next car over. Driving to work. See, you're going... And where do you come from? The cozy residence. You came from over here. So you decided, most likely, to drive along this road, turn there. Nope. Drive along this road, go up, turn out, and then go out that way. Hmm. It just seems like if you were planning to get to here... Yeah, I guess I guess that's understandable. <laughs> I was gonna say like he could have come out this way, driven driven down this way, and then gone onto the road out there. One other thing I need to check is the uh, speeds. It's 40, 60 on this. That could be why. I wonder if the higher speed on this road is causing people to value it at a priority. We'll just put it back to 40. 40 is the default. I had to increase some for some reason. So let's just leave it at 40 and give it some time. The other issue you can have in this game is making hasty decisions, so I'd rather just like let it play out. If we have a couple bad days of traffic, so be it. And then we'll say, okay, we need to invest in a solution. So let's just leave it like that. We'll give it a day, another day, day night cycle to go by and we can check back on it. All right, well, how are things going? So we're up to 43,000. That's actually not bad. We've got some residential desire, which is nice. Uh, we could check again. Yep, yeah, seniors seem pretty low down. Whoops. Uh, 8%. Unemployment's falling slightly. How's the uh, farms doing? They're making money at the moment. 407 employees. I'm happy with that. Happiness? Pretty happy. Residential happiness is 87%. People aren't living in a... in too much of a terrible place. Some of these guys aren't very happy. Why would that be? Just you out of... in particular. <laughs> out of, like, it's not even like a heat map thing. It's like, yep, yeah, I just... I'm just not happy. Well, it's kind of realistic, I guess. I wouldn't be happy if I was him. He got the short end of the stick. So did this guy. In fact, is it none of this zoned? Oh, that's probably a problem. All right, let's at least zone this. Whoops. Nope. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Let's pause time. There we go. Get these guys back in. Okay, so there's extra room to move back in then if you want to be part of Belmont District again, nearby the school. Our school, 247 going to school over there, which is good. So we put down a new one in the last episode. We haven't checked on it. Uh, here it is. 227 as well. That's pretty good. 12 visitors last week to the healthcare clinic. Zero patients for the medical clinic, but they're happy it's there. That reminds me, like, maybe we should be toning down <laughs> the, you know the healthcare budget just somewhat because healthcare availability is great there's 26 citizens so I think it's great to be putting healthcare around everywhere but we just do not need to keep that budget super full because it's not going to be used the density is so low here that it's like yes it's good to be near a clinic if you ever need it but no one really needs it at the moment um, one other thing I keep saying that but uh, parking What's the parking situation? People are being told you can park there. I don't think so. No one's parking on these roads. Things are smoothing out again. Maybe it's just that morning commute. Or maybe enough time has passed that 
they're figuring out their roots a bit better now. Now hang on one second. I'm just after noticing two cars disappear. No despawning is active. There must be something wrong with this. The lane connector might not be giving them a way out. It might be bugged. Well, not bugged. I mean, incorrectly designed from me. Definitely saw two cars disappear. They're right there. So everyone's here on the inner lane. I would assume they're going around the roundabout, like through it. This looks good to me. Whoa, what the hell is this? Resides at the Birdsong residence. Oh, he lives there. Well, can I really be that mad at him if he's going to park his car in the roundabout because he lives over there? There's no parking, but I guess his car just teleports in there and he walks there. Maybe we'll leave parking on one side just for some people to get out. Might encourage them to get out in there. See, those cars might have, might have disappeared. I don't know, but they may have disappeared just because I changed some of the rules and they were already destined to go a certain way before they realized. They're... Oh, right. They're getting out. That's what they're doing. They're getting out. They're just getting out on this road. All right. <laughs> well, that, that gives us our answer. So you can park on this road. and We lowered the speed and we're allowing parking again. I think that makes sense, right? It's no longer this fast lane road. I did mean for this road to eventually become a, a four lane. That was kind of the idea. Which would solve some of the traffic issues. Maybe. But maybe they're prioritizing other things now because the speeds have been brought down. Junctions, how are we looking? Alright. I'm pretty happy with things actually. It seems like that problem's kind of going away. Um. And we're making some money. How's this doing? We're up to 55 tons. I don't want to sell it just yet. Not enough raw materials. I don't believe that. These are full of crops. It says balanced and it's 98% full. 98% full. So do you have someone on the way? Because you should. You do. Yeah, you've got a truck that's on the way. It's there. Don't know why that happens. When you've, we've clearly got so much. Why would it take this long to get your... Surely when it's like halfway getting low, someone should be told to come out with it. It could be the case that maybe there's not enough trucks, actually. That could be the case. We'll have a look and see if they're all in use. It's interesting to follow the route that this guy took in. But yeah, that's I'm happy to see him go that way. And he should just go straight back out with the bypass back out to the bridge. Delivering products now back to the small grain silo. Yeah, off he goes. All right, cool. So let's see. Six trucks in use, six in use, six in use. Yep, six in use. Oh, I think this is our issue. Seven in use. These guys are busy. Super busy. Nine and nine in use. Now, I'm no smart potato, but I would assume they need more storage if the trucks are constantly in use like this. Am I correct with that assumption or would I be wrong with that assumption? I don't know, <laughs> but we'll put another one down. It gives us another nine, another nine trucks. You see, the problem is, aren't they? I'd love to know what are they all doing. <laughs> see, they're importing goods. Like, why are you doing that? Returning to facility. Oh, maybe they're actually exporting it. Yeah, that could be it. They're exporting it off map, and that's a long drive. So I can understand that to an extent. We're overproducing so much. That the, tr the trucks are busy shipping the stuff away. That is what I think is happening. So if that's the case, maybe it just means that we should maybe be making... Put down another one of these. Get some extra jobs for animal products, right? So that way they're just putting the crops in there. And then we have... They have to deal with the animal products. Rather than shipping it, the agricultural products away, the crops. That might make more sense. Let's try that. Uh, do we have the money? 58000 I think that's enough for another milking parlor.
flour mill. Again, we could always be making more flour, but I think another milking parlor would be good. It's expensive. Uh, six, fifth, 640 kilowatts, 240 water, 70 workplaces. Slaughterhouse. Actually, we don't have any slaughterhouses. Should we do that instead? 85 workplaces. That's what someone pointed out. The, oh my god, it's a big it's a big building. I think there would be a kind of a cool place to have it. We could get rid of the old farm. Um, so it's 16,000. It's actually not that expensive, all things considered. The old farm is gone. The old guy's land. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's just click this. Can we pop it down this way? What's wrong? It must be placed. Not. Oh, sorry. The industry area needs to be grown out a bit. All right. Well, it is, really is a big building. Lights, I think, may come on during the night once it gets some power going. Uh, which we just cut off. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait till it gets... Hey, it's got its workers, though. So that's going to help the industry demand the unemployment issues. Uh, I left this gap here because I was like, well, we could put more storage, but there is storage right here, I guess. And these guys, ju it just takes in crops and puts out animal products. That's all it is. And we've sunken in the terrain a little bit over there. Hey, there we go. It's online now. Yeah, it's not many lights inside of it, I guess. Is what it is. All right, so hopefully um, we'll put to use some of that extra crops that we've been exporting. You know, we're after exporting three, 176 tons of crops, so we've got plenty. Uh, so definitely we could just keep expanding the farms out a bit. Maybe um, look to do something in this area a bit more with more buildings. The reason I didn't is just because the land value is still quite good around this area. But we've got all this space here for more crops if we ever needed it. Cool. So what's the deal with the worker situation? So 40 uneducated, 30 educated, 10 well-educated, and 5 highly educated. Good. What a great city. I would think I'd be dreaming if I didn't know otherwise. All right, it's morning time. The commute is starting again. You can see people coming out. And actually, we can see several dump trucks, is it? Biofuel garbage trucks. Yep. No one on the bus. No one on that bus. Seven on this bus, which would make sense. It's heading a bit more towards work or slash co commercial areas. Whereas this one's going kind of back in to collect people, I guess. I mean, things are a little backed up, but not obviously as bad as it was earlier on. So let's just speed up time. See, even though the yield signs are gone, they do wait until the road is clear. So that's actually a good thing. Although I suppose if things were, all things being equal, knowing that this car is going to turn yeah, see, that's weird. Knowing that a car is going to turn right, you should just get going, right? That's what people indicate for. <laughs> or they're supposed to. But my lanes are correct, I think, right? I think so. So you know if someone's in this lane, you're not supposed to go. But they just go anyway. <laughs> and then you know if someone's in this lane, you're free to go. That's something that, um, you know, I, again, I don't drive, but Rosie, my girlfriend, just learned to drive a few months ago and passed her test and everything. And I'll be sitting in the car and I'll see that someone's in this lane. So I'm like, oh, they're going to turn in. They have to turn in. They're not, they're indicating that they're going to do so. And Rosie will kind of like wait just to see. And I'm always like, no, I think you're just supposed to go, right? Because you... All things being equal, they are supposed to turn. I know people on roundabouts don't often indicate and you want to be cautious over anything else. But I do feel like I'm like, well, they're going. They should be turning. If they were in the other lane, then they wouldn't be. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> nice to see all the people using our little bridge and taking our path to work. And then there's a bus stop right here as well. Excellent. And yeah, look, they're all just crossing over there. We moved that crossing further down, which is let people get into work here. I think I've done an okay job with that. Uh, we are filling up again a lot, though. It is Maybe it's just we'll have to deal with it. It's just a busy road. Well, if you have any suggestions or solutions that you think I should implement, let me know. 
Arguably, the roundabout made things worse. <laughs> I think I'm happy with the way I've made this be a one-way. I think that was a good idea. Because it's still just being backed up here. It's like the amount of weight... Should it be a forward lane, I think, is really the last thing on my mind. Would that even change anything? I don't know. If it was a four lane, it would be easier to guide the cars onto the roundabout. I I damn spent this whole episode on this roundabout, didn't I? Pretty much. Hope people enjoyed it, though. I had fun. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe they do need the junction sign on, then. It's not yield, and that's priority road. I don't know why they're stopping. Why are you stopping? That's my concern here. You are free to go. There is no car coming on. Just go. I guess that's what my big issue here is. Is there a node on the ground or something? There's a node there. Hang on a minute. I wonder, could that have been any part of the problem? It still feels like, yeah, they're just stopping. I'm just not too sure why they're stopping. I need a, I need a moment where no one's coming this way to see if they continue to just stop. All right, so now we've got blank road for a bit. Uh, that car came up pretty quick. <laughs> it's like being on a real roundabout. <laughs> Where are you going that you can't get into that? Oh, you don't want to take a ride, so you have to wait. Yeah, okay. He's waiting for this lane to open up, right? So he's, oh, he's chosen a good moment. <laughs> this is great. All right. I'll leave it there. So this is the roundabout episode. You guys can tell me what we could do to improve this if you want. And uh, But yeah, other than that, it was also a kind of a waiting episode while we're waiting to rebalance the senior situation that we had going on. Okay, so we're still at 8%, actually. I'm surprised it hasn't gone up at all. Um, but it will. It definitely will. And then also more people are... Oh, low land value, is it? Yeah, we can help that. We can put down some parks and things. All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. We'll see how things shake out with a bit more time. But um, in the next one, hopefully start filling this back out, getting our population back up. We're really close to 7,500. Once we do that, it's a matter of just saving up some money so we can build out our bigger city up there. All right, that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, so I've just been continuing playing right after recording because I wanted to figure out this roundabout just a little bit more. So I've sort of eased the traffic problems because I realized a couple of mistakes that I had made. For one, I hadn't adjusted the speed limits on either side leading into the road, so that's all correct now. So cars are kind of slowing down artificially as well, which is just causing slight issues. The other one was more majorly was that my lane connector, I hadn't hooked up this blue lane to go back out into the four lane arterial. Same on the way in. So, for instance, cars were in this red lane all piling up because they thought, oh, I won't be able to get out onto the inner lane. I have to stay on the right. Just the way it was lined up. So now they're kind of crisscrossing a bit better so that they're able to say, hey, I'm in the green lane. I'm going to continue in the green, stay on the inside, which shifts to the blue. And blue leads me to either continue going around or, if I want, uh, get out to this kind of faster lane on the inside, yeah, and just bypass going to work at all. So that seems to be helping um, quite significantly. There's still some slowdown in the mornings when they come out, but I just thought I should mention it before people maybe write in the comments that I forgot to do that. Uh, I think it was the same up here. So these guys now have the proper way out to get onto both lanes. They were all previously just trying to get on the outer one, so it seems to be working a little bit better now. They have their yield sign back in, and it's a bit smoother. It's still, it still gets backed up in the mornings, but not nearly as bad as it was. The other thing that I just added was traffic lights down here. I don't know if I'm going to keep that, but I noticed that having traffic lights here gives the roundabout time to let other people on or off down in this area because it creates that, like, stop-start kind of thing. So there's a gap. There's a bigger gap of no cars thanks to the traffic lights, and that gives time for these guys to get out. Whereas if it's just a continuous flow all the time, they never really seem to get the time to get out, uh, at least not properly. So that seems to have helped slightly, but it does obviously push your problem further down the road. Quite literally um, but not too bad to be completely honest I'm okay with having a bit of traffic just a little bit keeping it above that 81 number and keeping it relatively free-flowing like it's a controlled traffic light that we know 
doesn't really hold people too long. But it would be nice to have everything smoothly flowing, and this is kind of getting backed up. So, as always, just keep feedback coming. If you have any suggestions, what do you think I should do, or things I could do to help it, let me know. Um, I'll try not to spend so long just on one specific thing in future, but... The other thing I actually do plan on doing in the, uh, later on is having another industrial area somewhere up here. So not everyone in this entire area will all just be piling down to the one area. Hopefully they'll break it up a bit and go to the other places too. Um, but yeah, alright. That's going to be it. Bye.